Welcome to Expert Talks by Calkine TV. Sage here and today's guest is Mr. Anthony Coniglio, the President and CEO of New Lake Capital Partners. Now for some background, New Lake Capital Partners is a leading provider of real estate capital to state licensed cannabis operators and they were founded back in 2019. So they can help whether it's with cultivation, dispensary or processing, and I'm keen to find out more. Bringing you live today, we have Mr. Anthony Coniglio, President and CEO of New Lake Capital Partners. Welcome to the show, Anthony. Thank you, Sage. I appreciate you having me and I look forward to the discussion. Fantastic. Well, let's make the most of our time slot. How is New Lake Capital Partners working to solve the liquidity and access issues facing the legal cannabis industry, please? As, as one of the largest owners of cannabis real estate in the United States, we provide much needed capital for operators, as you pointed out, to support their expansion around cultivation or processing or their retail dispensary locations. We provide capital for build out. Um, we provide capital for improvement. Um, and all their real estate needs. And so what we're trying to do is be there for our, we currently have 11 tenants, 29 properties across, uh, uh, excuse me, 29 properties across 10, 11 states for 10 tenants, excuse me, tongue twister there. It's late okay. in the day in the US. Um, but we believe that by providing them this capital, they can accelerate the deployment of their business plan and serve the needs of their uh, consumer base. That's fantastic to hear, Anthony, because it's not always easy getting investment funds for these great ideas that people are having, especially innovation in a growing industry like the legal cannabis industry. So it's great to hear that your infrastructure is there to support these companies as they develop. So how would you describe the unique real estate capital needs for this booming market? Well, they're very, very different from the cultivation side. Um, think about a large industrial facility growing marijuana indoors, it requires very special uh, heating, ventilation systems, humidity control, perimeter security, interior security. Um, so these are very, very sophisticated buildings. You, know, you could really put it akin in some respects to biotech space or even data centers. And so there's a lot of nuances that go into the industrial side. But even on the retail side, many of these locations have special restrictions uh, placed on them by the localities, whether it be screening on the windows, security around the perimeters, or even see inside the store or a safe to store the product where you wouldn't normally see a safe in a retail environment. Anthony, thank you so much for summing that up for us. And I suppose that sustainability practices would also be a big part of the design of these types of buildings. Would you say that would be true? That indeed is, and it's something we focus very much on. We take seriously our responsibility around the, the issues of ESG. Um, but in particular, as it comes to the properties that we are invested in, we like to see that they're using high efficiency lighting, um, LED lighting as one example. Um, they're also reclaiming a lot of the um, irrigation that's utilized and putting that back through the system. So using the natural system very, very efficiently in order to get the best possible yield out of the per square foot. So something we're really focused on and something I think this industry is doing a really good job on. Exactly, Anthony. Yes, I'm keen to see what the developments will be over time where hemp can be used to um, create a more sustainable future. Um, so at the moment, the U.S. cannabis industry is operating with casino-like econ economics, apparently. Will this business model persist in the long term, in your opinion? Well, I would actually characterize it a little bit different because casinos, while they have an oligopoly, they also have low margins and they're very cyclical with the uh, with the economy. And I would I would contrast that with the cannabis companies that have actually much better margins and are less go and are going to be less impacted by the cyclical gyrations of a particular market. I do think these dynamics persist. I think these businesses are maturing in a way that allows them to capture greater cash flow, um, become much more efficient. And with the ultimate legalization and the lifting of certain tax restrictions that are on these businesses, we'll see even greater cash and greater unit level and uh, company-wide economics. So I'm really, really excited for what the future holds for this industry. 
That's very interesting to hear, uh, especially about the tax changes surrounding the industry. So in your opinion, will equity investment be geared more towards plant touching or ancillary businesses over the coming years? I think it'll be more towards the plant touching side of the industry only because those elements of the, of the cannabis industry require so much infrastructure. Um, there is a significant amount of cost that goes into the real estate, into the growing rooms, into the lights and the equipment that surrounds that whole uh, cannabis growing apparatus. And that requires a significant capital investment on the part of the cannabis companies. Um, and so that's where I think it will go. I think the ancillary companies will have certainly their share of capital raising to do, but I don't see their capital needs and their capex needs being as intense as a cultivation um, facility. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks so much. So we're starting to round up the discussion now. I do thank you for your time and sharing these insights with our viewers. What opportunities do you foresee on the horizon for New Lake as the cannabis industry continues to professionalize? Yeah, at, at New Lake, as I said earlier, we're one of the leading um, providers of capital to real estate in the cannabis industry. We intend, we intend to leverage our early mover advantage, having been in the business since 2019, to partner with our existing tenants as well as new tenants to provide capital that the industry needs to grow. We estimate that the industry needs over 10 million square feet real estate over the next three years alone to meet term demand. And once you move beyond that, um, the, the amount of capital that's necessary to support the massive growth, particularly with ultimately federal legalization in the U.S., is very, very significant. We want to be there to be true partners with, um, with the industry to help grow and realize its full potential. Fantastic to hear, Anthony. Thank you so much for making time to join us today on Expert Talks. Sage, thank you so much for having me. And if you've just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Mr. Anthony Coniglio, the President and CEO at New Lake Capital Partners. Now, for the full recording, please head to Calcine Media's YouTube channel and keep watching for more of these live expert talks and live market updates. And until the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calcine.